Good afternoon. So first of all, I would like to say thank you uh, for the invitation from MOFA. So before I start my presentation today, I want to explain why I chose this topic, because I think a lot of us, we would like to know more about the uncertainty in the, in the world. So uh, recently, because my team and I, we travel a lot to different cities to talk about Asian local currency bonds, current treasury bonds with our investors. So in the past few months, we went to Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, London, Paris, and New York. And then we found out that our investors, global investors, they are very interested in one topic. So we have a growing China bond market. So whether the growing China bond market will affect the demand of the other bond markets. So today, and that's why I would like to share with you, so what do you think about you know, whether the growing China bond market, whether it's a flat or a trade to the Asian bond market and to the Korean treasury bond market? So first of all, um, let's look at the China financial market. So well, well, one word to describe, big. It's very big. So right now is the you know, third largest um, uh, equity market in the world. If you include the Hong Kong exchange, because in Hong Kong, right, most of the listed company, over 70% of the market share, those are Chinese companies. And you, you will become number two. So we have the, um, the fourth largest bond market in the world. Well, although the global participation into the China bond market is still very low, the market itself is very big, so we will look at it later. Uh, currency market, so we have an onshore deliverable RMB market as well as an offshore deliverable RMB market, which we call it the CNH market. So if you look at the growth of the um, uh, China bond market, right, it's amazing because you know it's growing on 20%, 3% on an annual basis. So part of the reason is because, you know, the Chinese government, they have been pushing um, the private company as well as the public sector to issue bond rather than getting loans directly from the commercial banks. And this is why we have seen, you know, um, a lot of public sector, you know, including local governments, they start to expand and to increase the bond issuance. So I think this is a chart uh, better describe how the, both the equity market and the bond market, they're growing. But you know, interesting to see, actually the equity market shrink after year 2017, because the China Asia index dropped from 6,000 points to right now only 3,000 points. So imagine actually the uh, price dropped 50%. So it's still growing in terms of the whole market capitalization. So I have to em emphasize, because a lot of global investors, when they are looking at you know, different local markets, right, they need to see the capacity. So right now, well, this market is basically fulfilling you know, one of their requirements, which is how big it is. So SDL, back in year 2016, so uh, the RMB was being included into the SDL, and the ratio is 10.92%. So why in inclusion into SDL is so important is because, well, one of the criteria is about, you know, the freely use usage of the currency. So with the development of the offshore deliverable RMB market, so they have the recognition from uh, IMF to recognize RMB, you know, to certain extent, is a freely use use usable market. So this is affecting um, SS allocation as well because Central bank, sovereign wealth fund, they do look at the basket of SDL when they consider about the allocation. So if we are seeing a higher percentage of uh, RMB in the future, uh, probably there will be more allocation into China. So recently we have been talking a lot about the index inclusion. So Bloomberg Barclays Index, they decided you know, last year to include China into their index. Um, so they will implement this year. Uh, GBIEM index, they just announced a few weeks ago they will include China and the ratio is 10%. We'll look into details later. So, but you know, FUSI WGBI index, they decide not to include it right now. Probably they will do it later uh, next year. So, well, from the index, right, uh, we, we have a what uh, calculation? probably we'll have 140 billion from both uh, Barclays Global Index as well as the WGBI Index. And for GBIEM Index, right, there'll be another 30 billions of uh, inflow. So 
you may have a question. So Patrick, so global investors, they are buying more China. So would Korea be affected or the other part of the EM Asia be affected? So we will look into the details. Uh, Bon Connet. So Bon Connet, right now, you know, the global investors, they, well, they are very excited about Bon Connet. I want to spend a bit of time to explain about Bon Connet, why they are so excited. Because first of all, China is not a clean netting jurisdiction country, which means that their bankruptcy law, there's the discrepancy between the China bankruptcy law and the common law. And this is why when the global investors, they design to invest in one of the market, right? Well, the legal issue will probably be one of the most important consideration. So one of the common questions that they have is, if I buy bonds in China, the custodian of the bond probably is in Beijing. So if one day, if there is a further capital account control, can I get money out of the country? So this is their big, biggest concern. So bond can help them to solve this problem because uh, practically, they are holding a bond under CMU of Hong Kong MA. So it's a common law jurisdiction. And they can do hedging under Bon Connet. Basically, it's an Easter execution. This is a reason why we have seen global investors, they start to sign up uh, Bon Connet. So if you look at number, by March year 2019, uh, there are 700, over 700 global investors who sign up Bon Connet. But actually, the number already went beyond 1,000 uh, by June this year. And 400 investors came from US, Americas. So this is telling you that probably, you know, the global investors, they are quite interested in the China bond market. So whether China bond market is attractive. If you look at um, the bond markets by using debt to GDP ratio, as well as the absolute government bond yields, Right now, the China debt to GDP ratio is around 50%. So uh, South Korea is around 40% right now. So compared to Italy, well, compared to Japan, Japan is over 200%. Government bond yield, well, very obvious, because 10-year China government bond right now is offering 3.14%. 10-year KDB is around 1.4%. 10-year Treasury bond is around 1.56%. But you know, a lot of the other you know, government bond markets in the world, big one, or well, they are trading at you know, negative yields. And this is why, uh, in terms of absolute return, in terms of debt to GDP ratio, I think Asia bond, not just about China, including South Korea, we still offer relatively you know, attractive uh, returns to the global investors. And this year, we start to see the global investors, they are coming to Asia, to buy ultra long end bonds. So, so Credit Erico has been helping, you know, uh, to promote the KDB to global investors. And this year we have to execute a 50 year KDB trans transaction with the global investors. And we also have to execute 30 year China bonds with the global investors. So you can see the global investors, they come to Asia, they come more to Asia, and they are buying longer and longer tenor bonds. So let's look at the issue of the China bond market and why they're so keen to get more inflows. If you look at this chart, basically they're telling us that the whole market, the whole 12.4 uh, trillion bond market, 85% is being owned by commercial bank in China. The foreign investors, they only make up 2.6%, which is like $280 billion. And out of that 2.6%, that $280 billion, the majority of the investors, they are central bank and so forth funds. So Patrick, you have been telling me that, you know, there are 100, a thousand accounts they sign up to buy China bonds. So what I'm trying to tell you right here is, a lot of them, they have signed up, but they haven't executed yet. Or the amount that they have bought is actually very, very minimal. Let's take a look. So whether you know, the expansion of the China bond market is hurting the other market. So let's look at the index inclusion. Well, you look at the um, chart on the top right hand corner is the inclusion of the China bonds into the Bloomberg Barclays Index. So China is having 6%. So basically we are taking market share from US dollar, which is 2.72%, Euro, Yen, Sterling, and CAD. So basically, 
the whole EM Asia, we're having market share because right now the whole year market cap, it goes to 314 billion from, you know, um, the, the, um, from, from less than 200, uh, 200 billion dollars. So the allocation to uh, Korea KDB remains at 55 billion dollars. So in general, the whole EM market becomes bigger under this index. So let's look at GBIEM index. Well, China, you know, from 0%, it goes to 10%. So we are taking market share from Thailand, from Malaysia, and actually we are also taking market share from Latin, from the other part of the year. And if you look at the, the inflow, outflow of the EM this year, right? I put a chart to compare the inflow, outflow for Korea and also China in the affordable market. So we found out that there's a very strong correlation among the EM countries. So other than India markets, right? First of all, this year, most of the Asia local bond market, we record local uh, uh, bond inflow. So global investors, they have been buying more EM local currency bonds. So by looking at this chart, we found out a very interesting phenomenon. Because during May, June, July, we had a hot debate regarding trade war. So RMB depreciated, won't depreciated. But we actually, we had more and more inflow from the global investors, from the other, you know, uh, part of the world. So you see, it's actually quite significant. Because we are talking about, you know, the currency, you know, has been depreciating by, by 3% in the past three months, but we have uh, more than, you know, uh, 10 billions of inflow into Korea and more than 20 billions of inflow into China. So in January, I think for Korea, right, we have some redemption issue, rollover issue. But in general, you see a st quite strong correlation between Korea and the China inflow. So I would like to draw a, a, a quick conclusion. First of all, the global investors, when they look at Asia, right, first of all, they underinvest into Asia. And when they look at Asia right now, they think that Asia becomes more attractive. Because in the past, I have some global, global investors that come to me and say, Patrick, I want to buy EM Asia. So before I can, I can buy China, I already have a lot of Korea. What can I buy? So they went to Singapore. And one auction, one single investor, they can buy, buy the whole auction. So while well, those markets are too small for some of the pension funds, insurance company globally, or by looking at Hong Kong, so let's say Hong Kong local bond market, every six months, the government bond exchange fund NOx issuance is only up to 100 million US dollar. So this is too small. And this is why a lot of pension funds, insurance company, they are operating in the region, they need more assets. They need a bigger market. When they have a bigger market, well, like Korea, like China, the financial market is more developed. They are more keen to put more money into Asia. And this year, there are more, you know, excuses or I would say more attractions for them to come because they are more uh, bullish regarding some of the South Asia countries, including Thailand and Vietnam. And this is why we have seen, uh, starting early this year, no matter it's bond or equity, we, we have seen positive inflow into various local currency uh, market, local markets in Asia. So by looking at this, right, at the same time, we also found out that there are bond outflows from other EMs, let's say Russia, Poland, Mexico, and some of the Latin countries. So if, imagine, let's say, Federal Reserve, they really consider to expand the balance sheet. So people are talking about the possibility of QE again. If there's a real, you know, expectation of QE, if Federal Reserve really launch QE, so what would they do? Probably because the US dollar funding will be more favorable, so they will have more demand on EM Asia product. So the inflow in August, uh, as we know, is slowing down. In September, it has been slowing down. It's also partly due to the tighter US dollar funding, because another. Uh, issue that most of the EM countries that we share in common is about the US dollar basis. So if US dollar basis gets more expensive, probably global investors, they will hold more US dollar and wait for a better moment, cheaper price 
to enter into asset swap and to go into this market. So, well, even if we have flushed US dollar liquidity in Korea as well as in China, but the global investors, they're not going to bring extra dollars if US dollar is tight. So this is the reason why I say most of the EM Asia country, we share the, the, the common issue and we share the common attractions to the global investors. So um, a few issues, I think, how do we um, develop the market further? How do we attract the global investor further from here? Uh, so with the index inclusion, right, as I mentioned, for those indexes, well, there will be an extra 300 billions of inflow into China. Uh, from sovereign wealth fund as well as central bank, we expect there will be an extra $500 billion. Also, we have 200 billions of private money. So in the next five years, we probably will expect there will be $1 trillion going to China bond market. So I would say it's a scale issue. There will be a similar scale of uh, foreign capital going to Korea as well. So if China, there will be a, a trillion of inflow, I would expect, well, there will be 150 billion of inflow into Korean bond market. So my conclusion is the EMHR market probably should be benefit as a whole because global investors, they are looking at us as a whole. So in Korea, we have co comparative advantage because we have a more well-developed FX market, which is something that, you know, the China bond market and, you know, the financial institutions in China, they are, they are trying to learn from Korea. So, uh, but China, China bond market right now, because, well, PBOC, they announced that, you know, probably there is a 0% withholding tax. And, you know, on the test perspective, right, China bond market offers a competitive advantage to uh, current treasury bonds. And last but not least, I think the pentable market is something which is uh, pretty important. So in Korea, uh, it's about the everywhere market. So I know this market is not very popular, but why we need to develop a foreign issuers market uh, for the local currencies? Because the global investors, right, after they bought, after they buy enough common bonds, treasury bills, probably they want to diversify their book as well. So most of them, they have a country limit. They are subject to the limitation how much they can invest in a country's issuer. And that's why if we can provide a capital market structure for the foreign investors to issue in local currency space, probably more and more foreign investors, they would like to you know, get a taste of it. So I have seen the Chinese government, they are trying you know, to promote this pandemic market. Well, right now, well, it's quite slow, but we see the issuance has been going up. So I would say probably in, in Korea, if the area market is getting more and more active again, right, it's helping us to attract more foreign investors into Korea as well. So to conclude, uh, I'm very positive about the Asia uh, bond market. And I see actually there's strong correlation between uh, the regional market, as, uh, especially China and Korea this year. So dollar won actually is driving dollar CNX, honestly. Dollar one is more liquid than dollar CNX. So when we are trading the dollar CNX, right, a lot of times we have to hatch it by using dollar one. So um, the bond market, we have seen, you know, similar pattern of inflow as I showed to you before. And this is why if there are more inflows into China, I'm pretty sure that there will be more in inflow into Korea and the other part of EM Asia market as well. So I think this is our presentation today. Thank you.